Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Destiny video. The dawning event is not too far away now. It goes live on December the 13th and that of course brings with it Sparrow Racing League, the strike scoring system, new and returning exotics, new gear, a record book for you guys to track all your progress, loads of stuff like that. And of course this weekend I have been at PSX. I've had a chance to go hands-on with a good deal of the content. Not all of it, but a good chunk of it. So in this video I figured I would consolidate all that information and basically bring you guys seven new things that are coming to Destiny in the dawning event and by extension Sparrow Racing League. That way if you guys have missed anything then you can catch it all here. So if you guys do enjoy this then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions. But kicking things off in at number seven. This is an obvious one but let's start here anyway and that is brand new sparrows. It is of course a given anytime there is Sparrow Racing League there is going to be a plethora of new sparrows to choose from and while I was at PSX I had a chance to test out a few of them. This one in particular is my new favourite it is all black, apart from this kind of cool neon light strip that goes around. It's almost like chroma in that respect. You can't actually control it, but it basically flicks between different colors. So that way when you're racing, you have this kind of rainbow effect going on. It's super cool. Really, really like that. But I also got a chance to check out some different ones. There's, of course, both new models and old models. However, a Game Informer article actually has images of what I believe to be all of the new ones. So scrolling in the background are images of those for those of you guys that want to see. Needless to say, for those of you guys that want to collect stuff, there are going to be new sparrows to get. However, moving on from there to number six, there are three remastered strikes. The Shadow Thief strike, the Nexus strike, and the Omnigal strike. Now these are remastered in the Siva fashion, so that also means that the way in which they play out changes ever so slightly. So to give you guys a very quick summary, the Shadow Thief strike with the Tanix boss basically has a new mechanic in the final part where Tanix has an invulnerability state. Once you've dropped his health down to a certain amount, he will basically put up an immune shield. You can't deal damage to him until you take out the Siva power cores, which are those kind of big diamond things with like wires and cables coming out. There are normally three that spawn in relative proximity. You take them out, his shield drops again, and you can then deal damage to him. That tends to happen every sort of quarter. So that is basically the new mechanics surrounding him. As for the Nexus boss fight, that basically introduces some of the Vault of Glass mechanics to the final boss fight. There will be a situation where you'll get a debuff applied to you and your screen will start to go black as it does in Vault of Glass. And in order to cure this, you need to get cleansed. During this stage, there will of course be some enemies and one of those, when you kill them, it will drop a cleansing pool. You jump in there, it purges you, clears you out and you're good to go. The screenshots they shared did actually show a Vault of Glass style relic, the shield. I personally didn't encounter this during my time playing through the strike, so it could well be something that drops randomly. It could well be something we just didn't necessarily need to encounter. At this point, I'm not entirely too sure, but what I do know is that you'll definitely have to at least kind of try and stick together and seek out those kind of spots. Otherwise, you won't be able to see anything. And as for the Omnigal strike, this one is kind of hilarious. Also, probably going to be quite frustrating. I'm sure a lot of you guys are very familiar with the fact that you normally fight Omnigal outside the room and you just kind of snipe her gradually. Well, this time, when you set foot inside the room, the doors close behind you, so you're forced to stay in the room. There will also be, at times, green smoke that basically appears on the ground that slows you down. And again, when you get her health down to certain milestones, she will then disappear and summon some adds. And right near the end, she summons ogres. Yes, in that tiny room, there are ogres. It gets kind of crazy, but that is the change to that strike. So moving on from there to number five, a brand new record book. And this time, unlike Sparrow Racing League last year, this is completely free. You don't have to buy it, and it's not just tied to Sparrow Racing League. It is actually for the entire dawning event. So the first page tracks your Sparrow Racing League activities. Meanwhile, the second page tracks your strike scoring. So this book is your all-up means to track what goes on during the event. And much like the Rise of Iron record book, it also rewards you as you go. Shaders, emblems, sparrows, ornaments, and also gear. So some of your Sparrow Racing League gear can come from here. While, of course, the rest of it will also come from other sources, which I'll speak about shortly. And of course, for those of you guys that are interested in the conditions, then scrolling in the background is footage of the record books, so you guys know exactly what you need to do to complete it. Moving over from there to number four, I'm going to gloss over this one very quickly because of course I put up some videos already, but the dawning event is going to introduce two new exotic weapons, one returning exotic weapons and ornaments for some existing exotics. Of course, the two new LMGs are the Void Lord and Thunder Lord in inverted commas, or the Nova Mortis and the Abaddon. The returning exotic is Icebreaker, and the ornaments are for Thorn, Red Death, 
Black Spindle and Last Word. They all look really, really cool. I actually really like the Last Word one. I know some people have kind of said that it's not that outlandish, but I kind of like the sort of chip paint on the grey one. Plus, Black Spindle is pretty cool, so definitely looking forward to grabbing those ones. They will also probably, while we're not entirely sure at this stage, I would imagine they may well come from some of the kind of treasures that you can get during the event, but if it's anything like Bad Juju, then once the event is finished, they will more than likely be added to the regular Radiant Treasure loot pool. Plus, it's also worth mentioning that if you look at the SRL event on the Director, the first one you do in a week will also give you a Radiant Treasure, so that means for the duration of that event, you will have more means to get Radiant Treasure. Moving on from there to number three, brand new gear. There are actually three new gear sets you can get during the Dawning event. One, of course, is tied to the Sparrow Racing League, one is tied to the Strike Scoring, and one is tied to the actual Dawning event. The Sparrow Racing League gear comes from a mixture of the book and also post-race rewards. The Strike Scoring gear will also come from completing some of Zavala's bounties. And the Dawning gear, which is the really awesome glowing white looking sort of Christmassy set, the one that basically gives the hunter like horns for a helmet and like spiky chests for the warlock, things like that. These pieces come from the treasures that are around the tower. And unlike the Halloween event recently, that didn't go down very well because of course people had to buy treasures. On a daily basis in the Dawning event, there will be treasure boxes or presents that will appear in the tower by NPCs, and these will be completely free. There will be one to open every single day. I do imagine there will be some that you can probably buy from Eververse if you want to speed up the process. But on a daily basis during the entire event, there will be one of these to collect every single day, and these gear pieces come from these treasures. So if you guys don't want to spend any money, then do bear in mind the event runs from the 13th of December all the way until the 3rd of January. So every single day, if you tune in, open one of those boxes, you're going to get something good. And of course, when you consider a complete armor set is comprised of five pieces, then I'm pretty sure if you tune in every single day, by the end of it, even with bad RNG, you'll probably get a complete set. It is, however, worth mentioning that the Dawning Armor is only cosmetic gear. You'll need to infuse it if you want to make it viable. So while it can be endgame gear, it will come out sort of somewhere around light level 5 in a similar fashion to, say, the Desolate gear or the Chroma gear. Stuff like that. Moving on from there to number 2, it is here to stay. For the most part. Not the Dawning Event. The Dawning Event itself does run out on the 3rd of January. But Sparrow Racing League, once the event has finished, is going to be added to private matches. It won't be added during the event because, of course, they're going to want people to actually play SRL the playlist and not necessarily private matches. But once the event has finished, on the 3rd of January, Sparrow Racing will be part of private matches. And also the strike scoring is going to remain too. So once the event's finished, you will still be able to complete strikes, earn the points, complete the bounties, which definitely makes strikes a lot more interesting for people that do them on a daily basis. And then finally, the last thing new tracks in Sparrow Racing League. This is of course a given, but the new tracks are really, really cool. I personally wasn't a huge fan of the tracks last year, but I do really, really enjoy the ones this year, especially the one on Mercury. There's a couple of really nice tight 90 degree bends, and if you master the track and you can take them super tight, that is one of your biggest chances during a race to make up time or kind of undercut people. So that's a really fun track. Plus you also have one on Earth in a kind of snowy environment. So some really cool tracks. But of course the two tracks from last year on Venus and Mars will also be in the rotation. So when you queue up for a SRL match, there will then be four maps in the rotation. And the reason I left that till number one is because I'm now going to leave you guys with a little bit of gameplay from each of the new tracks. So that way you guys can get a look at how the track plays out and maybe kind of use that as a means to try and sort of pre-plan how you're going to take on the track. Anyway, for the time being, that is it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. This is all gameplay that I captured at PSX, so hopefully it'll give you guys a look at some stuff you might not have seen already. So if it was useful, again, like would be massively appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions, and take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out. You can win this! You're doing great!
Pharaoh race. Get going! Make us look good. Reading splicers near our location. 